Welcome to our lecture online and our next lecture is going to be about the orbital quantum numbers and what does that mean? Well every electron will situate itself in, the, in a particular orbit around the nucleus of an atom according to certain principles of physics and so in order to define that we came up with what we call four, four quantum numbers defining the state of an electron in a particular orbit around the nucleus. The four quantum numbers are called the principal quantum number, and let's start with this one. Uh, we use the letter N for that, and of course you've already seen that N corresponds to the various energy levels. So each energy level is defined by its principal quantum number. If you're in the first energy level, N equals 1, the second energy level, N equals 2, and so forth. And also, these are called shells. Shells in which the electrons can exist, and we give names or letters to those shells, so this would be called the K shell, and this is the L shell, and this is the M shell, and this is the N shell, and so forth, O and down the alphabet. All right? Now, how many electrons can exist in each shell? Well, that depends upon the conditions within that shell. And first of all, when we are in the first shell, we know that the orbit equals one wavelength. So the orbit, the length of the orbit, equals one lambda of the electron. So as the electron travels around the orbit of the nucleus, it will travel like a wave, and the length of that path equals an integer number of wavelengths. Well, for the innermost energy level, for the K-shell, the orbit is equal to one wavelength. And because it's equal to one wavelength, the electron has a very specific way or very specific limit of what it can do. It can only go around the nucleus in a kind of a circular motion, so to speak. And so since it can, of course, take any orientation, that circular motion then forms a shell, a, like, a, like a beach ball around the nucleus, and it can only exist along the skin of that beach ball, the skin of that shell. And so therefore, we have what we call the angular momentum quantum number. The angular momentum quantum number is, is the angular momentum the electron can have as it goes around the nucleus. And in this case, since the orbit is a spherical shell, the angular momentum quantum number can just be a single state. And therefore, we, have, we call this either the, the S or the P or the D or the F and so forth. Uh, orbital or angular momentum quantum number and this is called the subshell of the orbits. So since in the first energy level there's only one particular way in which you can have the angular momentum of the electron then for n equals 1 we could only have the s subshell. For the n equals 2 we can have the s and the p subshell. For the n equals 3 we can have the, uh, the S, P, and the D subshell, and for N equals 4, we can have the uh, S, the P, the D, and the F subshell. So these are subshells that are related to the quantic, uh, to the angular momentum of the particular electron. Now the reason why there can be more, the, the more different kind of quantum or angular momentum quantum states is because in the case of n equals 2, the orbit is equal to two wavelengths of the electron's motion and in the n equals 3 or the m shell the orbit length is equal to three wavelengths of the electron and in the n equals 4 uh, state or the n shell the orbit length is equal to four lambda and because with greater orbit lengths equaling greater number of wavelengths of the electron, there's more possible states in which the, the electron can go around the nucleus and therefore there's more angular momentum states that this uh, electron can be in and so therefore we have various what we call subshells within its energy level that contain different shapes of the electron's orbit. In addition to that, we have noticed that when we apply a very strong kinetic field on the nucleus of an, uh, or on the, an atom, that the electron can then exist in what we call different magnetic states associated with the orbit of the electron. And therefore, in each subshell, it can take on different spin directions, so to speak, or, or orbital directions based upon the magnetic field forces associated with the 
uh, electrons spinning through magnetic field and so therefore it can switch around into different orientations <clears throat> which means that within each subshell we can have a different magnetic quantum number state and then finally in the fourth quantum number an electron can either be spin up or spin down in other words it can spin in one direction or it can flip over and spin in the other direction which causes it to be in a slightly different energy state and so in each uh, sub orbital of a subshell an electron can can be in a up spin direction or a down spin direction so within each subshell so the uh, subshells are associated with the spdf subshells and in each subshell in the s subshell there can only be one magnetic quantum number in the p subshell remember in the s subshell there's only one particular orbit distance uh, or or shape in the p subshell there can be different orbit shapes and so therefore there are three magnetic quantum numbers in the d subshell there are five magnetic quantum numbers and in the f subshell there are seven magnetic quantum numbers all right now of course that means that for the s subshell there's only one s orbital in the p subshell there is three p orbitals in the um, d subshell there are five d orbitals and in the f subshell there are seven f orbitals and finally in within each orbital each orbital has two spin quantum states it can have a spin up whoop, spin up and a spin down and here again we can have a spin up or a spin down for each orbital and so forth so now how many electrons can therefore exist within each shell well in the n equals one shell the k shell there's only uh, one way in which the electron can go around the orbit so that the orbit distance is equal to one wavelength because of that there is one subshell since there's only one subshell here in the s orbital there's only one s orbital and therefore you can have a spin up or spin down so that means you can only have a total of two electrons in the innermost orbit so this one can have two electrons because we have the n equals one level we have s there's only one uh, one suborbital or yep so there's one orbital and in that one orbital you can have two electrons in the n equals two level we have one s orbital and we have three p orbitals and in each you can have two electrons so four times two which means you can have eight electrons in this one in the next level in the n equals three level we have one s orbital we have three p orbitals and we have five d orbitals that means you have a total of nine orbitals in the third energy level and since each orbital can have two electrons that means you can have 18 electrons in the next energy level n equals four we have one s orbital we have three p orbitals we'll have five d orbitals and we have seven f orbitals Oop, seven and so that means 10 15 that means 16 total orbitals and 16 which means two electrons in each that means it can have 32 electrons and we're I'm kind of running out of room here so this one can have 32 electrons so in the first energy level you can have two electrons in the second energy level you can have eight electrons in the third energy level you can have 18 electrons in the fourth energy level you can have 32 electrons and so forth of course it gets more and more complicated but for our purpose here it's probably simple enough to just kind of lay it out like this so now that you've kind of have an idea of how we uh, talk about the existence of electrons in each energy level due to this particular shape that the, that their orbits can take on we're now going to specifically look at each element on the periodic table and determine how we can figure out the four quantum numbers associated with the electrons present in each orbital and in each energy level